consultant of SA and e-learning. So um, this webinar is going to be targeted at um, helping you achieve the best internal communications at your organizations. So um, the people we are targeting for this um, webinar are managers, HR, and um, people that are actually in charge of uh, managing employees and the internal communication at their organization. So uh, we promise you that this session is going to be very interactive. Um, after the, um, after the uh, presentation by Mrs. Abulu, we will have a question and answer um, session whereby you can send in your questions and um, Mrs. Abulu will definitely answer all the questions. I think um, it's safe to bring her up now. So we just get right into it. Um, Mrs. Abulu, thanks for, thanks for this one. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so my name is Shola Abulu. I'm the principal consultant of Shola Abulu Associates. Um, today's session is going to be very, very interactive. And thank you to those who have spoken up. Thanks to those who have who joined early and you were in the waiting room for quite some time. Um, please, can you introduce yourself in the chat, you know, and just let us know who you are and where you're coming from, what your sector is, so that when I speak and I go through the presentation, I can at least speak to what is relevant to you and, you know, make the best use of your time. First of all, a shout out to all of you for making time out, you know, on the Tuesday afternoon. I was a bit conflicted about running it at this time because typically I do my webinars Thursdays or Saturdays, but we, were, we had a scheduled conflict, so we had to do it today. So all of you that are here, you're really, really committed and we really appreciate your taking the time. So I really want to make this worth your while. So please just drop, you know, a bit about, you know, say, hello, this is who I am, I'm this and that. If you have any questions, you know, please put it in the chat and we'll take questions after I speak. I'll speak for about 20 minutes. I talk a lot, but I will try to keep it, um, you know, <laughs> within time, time by itself. So by 1.30, we go into Q&A. So any questions you have, put them in the chat straight off the bat. After 30 minutes, we will get into it. Thank you very much. So I'll be expecting to see you drop in, um, to drop your comments or introduce yourself to everyone on the chat. And um, and it's it's, a, it's an interactive session. So if you have anything you want to say while it's going on, please talk to the, introduce yourself to other people on the chat. You can never tell. There may be questions from people within the chat um, yourself. So um, yeah, effective communications in 2021. And you may wonder why I put 2021, because I needed to make the point that this is relevant to the moment because of the time we're in and the way in which the world is changing and has changed. And by way of background, I'm a communication strategist. I've done communications basically all, well, I'll say a greater portion of my life. I have a background in international relations, an MBA from the Lagos Business School. And then I worked as, the com as a communication strategist um, in, in a corporate organization for many years before I started uh, my own firm in January last year. So we do communications for firms, we work across sectors, education, telecoms, oil and gas industry. And really what I try to do, also in my professional life, I'm a part of, I'm on the Africa board of the International Association of Business Communicators. So I am very, very invested in advocating for communications being done properly in businesses and in organizations, because I have seen there are many companies that are struggling and thinking that they are having employee issues or they are having sales issues or marketing issues. What they have is a communications challenge that they just don't understand. You know, they are busy chasing after other things, not knowing that the problem is that they're just not communicating well enough to the people that need to do something to make them achieve what they want. So, or what they need to. So the first question I want to ask everybody here again is how important are your employees to your goal? It's a question I need to ask. Are your employees globally competitive? I'm saying this because there are people who in their industry, your employees can actually look for work anywhere in the world. For instance, doctors and nurses, IT people, you know what I'm saying, uh -huh. to some extent, communications people as well, but technical people, uh, people from, with science backgrounds, people, graphic artists, web designers, you know, are, are they globally, do they have skills? Or rather, maybe I should say, are your, do your employees have skills that are globally competitive? Because if they do, then you need to be concerned about how you retain them. Do they have specialist skills? In other words, skills that you cannot just pluck off the road. 
Even today, a good driver is a specialist skill. Please come and ask me, I will tell you. A driver that knows the Lagos, the, um, the, the map of Lagos on his hand, is not a driver you want to just wake up for him to come to you one day and tell you he's going. You, you understand what I'm saying? Are you able to pick your employees off the street at will when you need them? If your answer is no, like if it is yes to number two, yes to number three, and no to number four, then today's presentation is for you. But if it is not, then well, thank you for joining anyway, but let's see if we can learn something. The world has become a smaller place since COVID-19. And the reason why I say this is because there's so many people now, for instance, I see on my, um, all these big universities, they are recruiting into Nigeria aggressively. Everybody is coming closer because the world now, first of all, they're not, they've seen that, you know, everybody has been forced to work virtually. So it's no longer about looking for business in my neighborhood. Neighbor, the internet has become the neighborhood. And in that neighborhood, everybody is, we're all neighbors together. Me and Beyonce self, we are neighbors. It's just that well, I may not be able to climb her fence. You know what I'm saying? But yes, perhaps one day I may knock on her door and she may open via a tweet. So that's the world has become much, much smaller. And the new workplace purpose is around culture and pride, brand experience, health and web well-being, employer engagement and experience, particularly if you are dealing with this kind of employees that are globally competitive. Because if you are not able to create the kind of environment for them that enables them to deliver, they will look for where they're going to get it. And I think if you are a manager or you are a owner of a business or you are an, um, an HR manager, these are things that we need to know. So why are we even worried about this? Why is it important to communicate with employees? <coughs> Excuse me, why do we care at all? We care because businesses and organizations exist for a purpose, that's it. Any organization that we find ourselves, there's a reason, there's a purpose for why it exists. And whatever it is around this, if you look at all what we have on this slide, whether it's about solutions, business, strategies, marketing, there's a purpose around it. And the people around all of these activities need to know what they need to do at every point in time. And that's where communications comes in. How, why do we have to have communications within an organization? Why must it be something that we do? Now, I think the problem we have, and I'm keen to hear from all of you as we go along, is that I think people feel like we all communicate anyway. So what's the big deal? And people just feel, well, I've said it, therefore they should know. But this chart, this photo tries to show why you really need to have a purposeful and strategic and intentional approach to internal communication, particularly if you are many in an organization like this. Now look at the man with the red in the red box, the red shirt. He has, he's the leader of the organization, or he or she. He, he knows what, he or she knows what he wants to achieve. Now tell me, how is he going to pass that message on to everybody, right down to the people at the bottom? Yes, he may have the time to sit down with the one, two, three. How is he sure that, how is he gonna make sure that the vision that he has goes all the way down and that all these people at every level know what they're supposed to do. Maybe the people at level four, they are working in one factory in Shomolu, whereas he is in the head office in Ikeja. The number three people, they are heading the people on the third level, they are part of the Ikeja um, um, Potakot branch, while the people on the third level are in the Abuja branch. How do you make sure that everybody's working together? How do you, how are you sure that they're working towards the same goal? In fact, those organizations that you see, where you see people competing with themselves, you know, working against themselves, it is a breakdown in communications that causes it. Because people, nobody has been able to explain to them the reason why it is against their collective and individual interest for them to be working in different directions. In this kind of organization, particularly this kind of organization as you are looking at this now, if the man at the top does not take a careful and very thoughtful approach to communicate in this organization, let me tell you what the people do. Number three people, those people at the third level, they will start building empires. They will make sure that the people at the second level, they start building empire. They will divide um, one half of level three and level four from the other half of level three and level four. The people at the fifth level, they'll be fighting one another. This man at the red box, every time he will just find out that he's not hitting his targets. He's not whatever. He won't understand what's going on. Yes, because he has not put in place a framework for communications that is in control of, that he's able to ensure 
that communications is happening and that people are getting the leadership direction the way he or she intends it. He doesn't also have a framework that allows those people at the bottom level to provide feedback to him. So at the end of the day, the people in between the levels are doing their own thing, running a different agenda. At the end of the day, the man is the one first to go and be explaining to the investors or whoever why he's not making money. And if it's his own business, he's wondering what's not adding up. Some of this is the reason why a lot of companies fail. Yes, at the end of the day, you may say the product was not selling, they didn't make money, they didn't do this. But if you look into it, what happened was that the employees were not working in the same direction. There was no, and, and, and the leader was clueless. That's even the funny thing. And these are the things that happened. In, when I worked in an organization that was very big for many years, there were about 3,000 employees. So you can imagine this chart to like exponential level. It was when we started having this kind of um, framework of um, communications framework that I'm going to talk about. That was when leaders will be getting feedback of things that, I mean, sometimes the problems that you have in the operations is only when you talk to those people at the bottom level that you will know why you are not hitting your target. You cannot get the answer for the people on the second level, those three people there, you can't get it from them. So if you have a system in your company, if you have an organization that is similar to this, multi-levels, and a lot of people, at least 50 or more, even 20 can be a bit complex, but at least let's manage that one. That you, if, if you don't have that um, a, a communications framework that enables you to pass information and receive it back, understand you know, back and forth, you are likely not to be able to meet your targets. A good international communications, uh, internal communication strategy enables you to influence the people you need to influence in the organization to drive collaborative action to enhance productivity, to achieve your performance, to drive um, safety, compliance, and deliver the results that you want. That you want to. Now, why is all of this important? First of all, okay. Now, effective workplace communication is rare. And any, any of us that are in the chat, if you, if you believe that in your organization, you actually do it well, please let us know. Because um, a survey was done by Happio, that's, um, I think it's an internal communications platform firm. And they found out that three in four employees, this was in the US anyways, they found out that three in four employees say that the ability to communicate effectively is the most important leadership quality. Does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me. A lot of problems that we have, even in political leadership, is the absence, is the inability to communicate effectively. You expect the people to know, are they psychic? How will I know? You won't tell me. Do I know what's in your mind? You expect me to know. You have to break it down, make it granular for each level. The way you break it for manager is different from the way you communicate it to the supervisors, to the leaders, to the employees. You have to break it down. So the employee says that they, they value, the quality they value the most is the ability of the leader to, to communicate effectively. Because yes, information is power. If you have a leader that isn't communicating, how do I even know if what I'm doing is on the right track? I had some leaders before in my life, um, whatever, that you give them work, they don't even tell you whether it's good, whether no feedback. So I don't even know whether I should continue doing that thing in that way, or I should not do it in that way. It's the worst of kind of leadership style. And there are many people that are doing it like that. So if you're an HR manager, or you're a communications manager, or you are a leader or a business owner, you have to put in place a strategy or a structure that forces or, you know, encourages this um, kind of, how would I say, purposeful communication, just so that you can achieve your results. Don't assume that it will just happen, people will just know what to do or they will know what to say. No, it, research shows that it doesn't happen that way. Now, research also shows, this same research that was done by Happy also shows that there is a big gap between the information that was sent and that which is received. Again, if you look at that chart that we saw, yes, now there will be gap. Because at the end of the day, number one is passing it to the number two level. Number two is passing to number three. By the time they remove the, they get to number three, it's a different message. By the time the level three gets to number four, it's a completely different message. So the only way number one can be sure that the message is getting to people the way he intends is if he has a plan that, okay, there's some point at which I will meet everybody and we will have a town hall where I can then check or he has a way whereby he goes straight to level five and tests whether the message has been passed to them the way he intended but all this has to be planned otherwise number one will be doing his daily work the rest of everybody will be doing the work the way they know how is the result at the end of the day that will let us know whether 
communication happened or it did not. And in this research, 40% of internal communication say that employees, only 40% said that they have a good understanding of their own contribution to the corporate strategy. Now look at this. So this is a company now. Imagine you are an entrepreneur like I am. You have 10 people working for you. Only four out of the 10 know how what they are doing is contributing to what I want them to deliver. Whose fault is that? It's a leadership failure. Because many times people don't connect the dots for employees to know that this thing, when we tell you, for instance, to make sure that you respond to your customer in 24 hours, the reason why we say you should do this is because when you do not do this, we lose money. And this is the amount we lose for every dropped call, for every um, delayed payment, for every delayed response. This is how much. If you don't spell it out to these people, they will not know. So when they see the result, they say, like, hey, well, is it my fault that we didn't make our money? Yes, it's your fault. But I can only tell you, 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 you only know that it was, you know, you know, it was your fault. If I had told you upfront, if I didn't tell you upfront, then it's clearly not your fault because you didn't even know what was required of you to bring that deliverable. So it says 57% of employees don't think they receive clear directions. I mean, that is really, really shocking. So people are just coming to work, getting paid, <laughs> and not even getting clear direction. And then 69% of managers don't feel comfortable communicating with employees, and that's a problem. And that's really a problem. And this research, the reason why I showed it is because even though it was um, conducted in the US, I found a lot of what they said here true. Because I also found in my um, work, when I was working in a corporate um, nine to five job, that a lot of managers, they didn't feel comfortable coming. I, yeah, there were people, I, yeah, for some reason, I don't know why. So particularly when it's a difficult conversation, if you need to tell somebody you're not doing something well enough, you need to improve, you know, and that sort of thing, they just were not doing it the way they should. And it became so much of a problem in the company then that at the stage we removed the middle level management because it was almost like they were a blocker. So we created an organization where everybody was reporting straight to their managers on top. We removed the supervisors in the middle. Can, you can imagine an organization having to do that, which put a lot of pressure on the managers because we then had to be reporting to so many people. But the problem, why we did that, was because of this 69% problem here. And this was a company in Nigeria. So it, these are real issues. And we, only made, we, would only, we, we made that kind of decision because it was showing in the bottom line. We were not delivering, we were not performing to the level we're not achieving our goals. And it was a leadership issue, it was a communications issue. So from the employee's perspective, this is also done by SMARP, it's also another internal communications platform company. And they were saying that the consequences of inefficient internal communication, you know, sometimes employees feel higher stress, many people cannot complete their pro projects, they miss their performance goals, and you know, they, it's not an innovative environment. Generally speaking, I, say whenever I go into conversations, because I also consult for companies that you know have performance challenges. And it always amazes me how many CEOs, they don't even realize that the reason why they are not meeting their targets is because of poor communications. They always believe it's something else. They will say, oh, the market environment has changed. Oh, COVID, there was no whatever. They will blame it on everything except their internal complexity. It, the thing baffles me. Meanwhile, you sit down with them one hour, you can already tell where their problem lies from. Nobody is working together. There is no shared vision, no collaborative agenda. This one is working in this direction. Person A does not know how his own work affects person B. So yeah, person B is waiting for A to deliver on he or her targets before they can process the invoice. That one is sitting on it, not knowing that you are finishing person B's work. Everything is just piling up. There is no system that forces people to work together, particularly the people who are in different departments. That's how most of us run our businesses. It's the most scandalous thing I've seen in my life. The question that I will, what I will say to everybody now is, look, oh, we're in a period now when the whole world is in crisis. That crisis has not ended. It's not going to end in 2022, neither will it in 2023. I think my personal belief is that as time goes on, the inefficiencies in organizations that we have allowed, that pre-pandemic times allowed us to, to, to skate on. Anybody that is, I, I believe that this crisis will, such people, they will be some of those companies that will just, they will just find themselves out of business. 
they just fight. They, they won't be able to compete. Because there's just not that much money around for everybody. There's, you're not, you know what I'm saying? There's just not that kind. The money is not enough. So you can't compete. You can't. You just cannot compete. So I, anybody, if you are on this um, call and you have an organization of about 50 employ, employees in your company, this is particularly for you. I'm assuming that the people with a smaller level, you should be able to handle these issues without, you know, that's why I'm saying this. But if you are, I would say, even if you are less than 50 and people are working in different locations, then it's the same sort of thing. Because either way, you unless they're, unless they're not paying them more, if you are owing them, but if you are paying and you have targets, you have loans that you've collected, you have commitments, you really have to be more intentional about how we make our employees support them to work together. It is in our own interest at the end of the day. And it's a hearts and minds issue, and I will show you how. Let me look at how am I doing for time. So these are some of the questions I will ask. Do you have an internal communications plan or framework? Yes or no? You will answer me later. Does everyone in your organization know what the corporate targets are? <clears throat> corporate target means what is the entire company going to? For instance, if it's empty, how many, what is, how many subscribers do we have? How many subscribers are we planning to have? What is our revenue target rate? It is important for every employee to know it. I am telling you. I can never forget that story of um, one man that said he went into NASA one day and they asked, he saw a man, um, this is the um, National Aerospace Agency of the US many years ago. It's a very well-known story. And he saw this man, janitor, um, cleaning the floor. And he asked him, he said, what is your, what's, what, what's the purpose of your job? The man said, I am keeping the floor clean to help the astronauts so that we can go all go to the moon. He connected his cleaning of the floor to the core purpose of the organization, which is to make the, 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 the first people to, be, to do the landing on the moon. No wonder they succeeded. If even the person cleaning the floor had been had bought into the vision, had been plugged into the, into the vision, that means that everybody, because yes, you have to, I mean, he, he has a role to play. And that connectivity, and like, like I said, the fact that they achieved that landing on the moon shows you that yes, but that is how they achieved it by plugging everybody, both the technical, the non-technical, the commercial, the financial. I always, when I see organizations where they have dichotomy between the core business and non-core, I just look at them and see people are, you don't even know what you are doing. Because anybody that you don't need in your organization, please get the person out. What's the person looking for there? Why are you creating the dichotomy is where there is no need? Because they need to be able to work together. So anyways, so that's a checklist. Now, five ways in which the pandemic has changed the workplace. Let's bring it down now heavily into 2021. Work from home is here to stay. So in other words, unlike before, when we're all in the same place together and you know people can be doing nice service now, <laughs> many of us are working in different places. I were working from home. There's no standard working hours. Frequent business trips is, you know, is not usual for those of us who are doing a lot of business travel that time. Now, more leadership is required from all team members. That is the core thing which is why internal communications has become more important. Because it is only when people know what they're supposed to do that they will be able to do it when they're supposed to do it. Because now nobody's there, not necessarily people. I know some people are out working depending on the job that you do, but it's not like the way it was before. So we, we need people now to be more self-led, self-motivated. And the only way you can do that is by nurturing, by information, giving them the information and the clarity that they need so that whether somebody is there or the person is not there, they know what to do, they know when to escalate, they know you know the things that they need to do. And even if you're an employee yourself and you don't have that kind of clarity, maybe you also need to have a conversation with your supervisor and say, please, can you make things a bit more clear? Because honestly, if you are not clear about what you're supposed to do, you really cannot do, you can't achieve. And eventually they'll come back to you and say you did not deliver. And then you know it, it, it becomes an uncomfortable conversation. So um, I hope everybody's hearing me well. If I'm not, um, Kayode, I hope my audio is good. Yes, my loud and clear. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I need to be rounding up soon. So, so six stages of the COVID workplace. Yes, close, work from home. I don't, I don't think we need to go through it. I think we all know this. And the, the, what is now clear is that it's, you know, things are not going to return to normal. It's going to be- we're going Hello, to everyone. 
can you still if you, can you still yeah how is the audio it's okay on this i can hear okay can i go on yes ma'am okay okay so um yeah so there's no return to normal and we're going to you know Really, we're just going to be working this way forever. I will not say well for a long for the foreseeable future. Let me put it that way. And um, I think now we're working remotely. The next thing is how do we work better, even the hybrid situation, and then perhaps how do we work differently? But the important thing is that we need to work better. We need to work differently. And what I would suggest is that I think for employee communications to be effective, it needs to be strategic. It needs to be measurable. It needs to be focused on the audience, which is the employee, what you know, whoever it is and what they need to know. And it needs to be driven by the results that you want. And it has to be very, very targeted. You should not leave it to chance, but you should be focused on driving change. That's the important thing. It's about effective employee communications. It's about how you drive the change that you want through communications, because communications is helping people to understand, to see, why and how they can make a positive difference that will be in the interest of the company and in the interest of themselves. There is no other way to do it. You need to sit down, take a look at it. What do I need to do? And there are three things that I would advise anybody. If you want to start with this, I would say, have a strategy, have a plan, and have a calendar You know that you can do. And there are a lot of templates that you can look at on the internet and even that can help with this at a very, very low level. It doesn't have to be anything sophisticated, but I think starting very small can make a difference in whatever it is you are doing. But again, the problem is, I will start from, are you hitting your targets? If you are hitting your targets and everything is fine, then there's no problem. But if you are not hitting your targets and you feel that your employees are disconnected and there are many and you don't feel like you really have a control of what's going on, or you would like to set up a team that is connected, you are starting afresh perhaps, then, you know, these are things that is important for us to know and keep in mind so that when the time comes, we then know what we're going to do. And if I'm going off track at any point, you know, and there are things, scenarios I'm not considering, please drop it in the chat so that I can, you know, make it more relevant. But I will soon end anyway, so you have the opportunity to ask some questions. So four questions that we can ask ourselves. We need to pay more attention to employees' feedback. We need to reach and engage employees regardless of their location. And we need to measure how internal communication is is happening. I am a, I have a small team, a very small team. And even in my small team, I find out that sometimes I communicate and the message doesn't pass through. And how do I know when I see the results come back and it's very far from what I intended, even in my small team. So honestly, I don't really know how people who manage big companies and don't have an internal communication strategy. I, you people are magicians. I don't know how you're working because I have a small team, a handful, and still sometimes I still find out that by the time I test, I see what comes back. I see that, wow, it's like I didn't communicate. So how then do you manage it when you are 20, when you are 30, when you are 40? You are going to be surprised every day. I mean, I, I, I well, anyway. So ideally, this is what an internal communications template looks like. It looks like, what is my objective? Who do I need to speak, uh, speak to? What, what is in their head? What is in their heart? Because again, before I speak to people, and this is why it's good to have this kind of plan. You must know where they are coming from before you can speak to them in the way that they will understand and get them to do what you need them to do. You need to also understand where they, their mindset is so that even when you are creating an environment, you are giving them tools. For instance, if you know that there are people who are not computer savvy, then you shouldn't be talking, you should be favoring face-to-face -face communication rather than emails. You know what I'm saying? You know, you just because at the end of the day, it's action is results you want. So you need to put in place the strategy that will give you the results that you want. So it's not just what I want to do that I do, but I need to do what will help me get the results that I want from the people that I need to support me or deliver me, I mean, deliver for me or achieve what I want to achieve. So channels, do I go face to face? Do I use platforms? Do I, you know, what, what's the mode of communication? How do I measure that my message has been passed on? When I was working in my corporate, um, um, entity. This was some of the things we used to do. Oh, sorry, my phone should have been on silent. So um, this was those are some of the things I used to do, whereby I we would actually have a business target that we wanted to run, and I would then put a a 
a business target on it. So if, for instance, we're saying we're going to launch a new system and we want everybody to start using that system, we will do a communications plan like this. We'll talk to the people who are going to use the system. We'll tell them why they must use the system. We'll show them, you know, all those things. We'll do it like this. Then we will start measuring the usage of that system. It is when we see that we have gotten the usage of the system in the way that we want. That's when we know that we are successful. We don't count success because, oh, I just called people together and I spoke to them. No, we tie the number six to the number one. That's what employee communications is. Employee communication is not, oh, I just held an event. I spoke to people after that, hey, take the box. No, that is not employee communication. Employee communications is only successful when it delivers the business results that you wanted. The same way, if we have a strategy, like there were times in my um, organization then when we had production targets because we were, it was an all-producing company. When we have those targets, we say we have to meet these targets this quarter. Everybody knows this is the target we are going to meet. The production people know. The people in security know what they need to do to make sure that production is delivered. The people in community relations, we make them realize that these are the communities that we are, we are working with over this period. You must make sure. The people that are engaging government, we tell them to, this is what, every time we handled it like that, uh -uh, you deliver that production. Because everybody, all hands on deck, we all understand. But anytime we relax it, yes now, that's when you start hearing stories. Uh, we didn't deliver because this one happened. Uh, we didn't know uh, when we went there, something, something. Mm, yes, because people have become disengaged and disconnected. That's the way it works. And as it appears on a macro level, that's how it is on a micro level too. You just have to bring people together with information, with communications, with content, and with clarity. And then, you know, you provide the time. So this is a very good template. I found it on the internet and I'm somebody that believes in copying very shamelessly. So which is why, but as you can see, the validation of the person Saskia Jones is there. So it works very well. These are templates that I've used myself in any ways, but I did, just to show you that these are things that people use. If you go to the internet and you, you Google search internal communications templates, you will see, and you will see from different industries, different sectors, this is what people use. And they don't, people don't create template for fun. Any template that you see, somebody has thought through it. They have used it to solve a problem, a business problem. It has brought money for them. That is why they had the presence of mind to <laughs> load it on the internet. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, and I can I, I can validate that myself too. And that's why some of us have a job, you know, who do communications for a living, really. So um, and this is sort of what you want to achieve, and this can be done at any level, you know. If we think again of that um, image I had shared earlier of the jigsaw with the level one, two, three, four, and all of that, at the business level, at the top level, you have your strategic direction, leadership mandates, business targets, and everything. And but then there are many questions. Okay, so I want to maybe you say I want to, I am setting up this start startup. I want to get 500 subscribers to sign up to my app. Okay, that's what I want to do. And I want the app to become the leader in whatever, FinTech, whatever it is. That is what you decided. Okay, why do you want to do that? What, do you, what are you trying to achieve? Who's are working with you? Do they know when? What is your timeline? Maybe you told your investor or whoever, or this is you borrowed money from your parents. You're going to, you're going to pay it back. You know, they don't even know that. They don't know that there's, you know, they don't know that you have a, a 60 minutes, a 60 day window to make a certain amount of money. And where, you know, where is my target market? Who are the people that I'm really counting on to bring these um, subscribers in? And how are we going to do it? And then who is going to lead it? You know, how many of us are going to work in it? And then this black box is where the show key of the matter is. What's in it for me? You have to make it very clear. For some people, it will be experience. For some people, it will be skills. Some people, it may be, well, compensation. I, I think that one, you would have had that at the um, job entry stage, but there has to be an intrinsic what's the need for me that people feel, for them to feel connected to what they're achieving. For some, it may be that just connecting the dots for them that, look, if we're able to hit this 60 um, day milestone, that means that we will be viable as a startup, we will get more funding and your job will be secure. That's enough. I see a lot of employees, they, don't even, they cannot even make the connection between the fact that the fact that the employer is not making money, that means their job is at risk. They don't see it. That's why many people, when they now, you know, even civil servants, I'm sorry to say, there's, you know, they don't connect it. Or they believe that whether the government is making money or not, their job will continue. Whereas it's not true. 
So, but if you don't, I have found out that if you don't help employees connect the dots on these issues, they may not connect it for themselves. Many times, like in my, like I said, in my corporate lifestyle, which is where I, I got a lot of my experience from, it was in those moments when we had those communications plans that made people understand. Anytime the business is in trouble, we tell our staff. We don't go, we may not, you know, there are always confidential details, but we put it high level. Look, oh, we've had a difficult year. We did not produce as planned. These are the issues. This is what we need to do for the next three, four months. Um, if it is spending, expenses has to go down by X. Those of you that do this, 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 you know, you must have that communication. And then everybody knows the why. So they are just. So the departments that spend money without thinking, they, they, they stop that. So that what's in it for me. And again, all, like I said, everything is intentional. If you don't sit down and do it, you will forget, you will hit the, you will miss. At the end of the day, you will not get the result. I am personally, because I'm a consultant and I'm a research person, I am really watching to see how companies will navigate this period. I'm really, really watching to see. And for me, I want to see whether the way, I want to see how much change companies will have to make and the companies that will excel by making those changes. This is also another template I picked up from the internet by this um, place called EEDO. I think it's a very good one. You can create your own internal communication plan. Who are your stakeholders? What do they need to say? What team? How am I going to speak to them? Employee segments, because again, like I said, talk to people differently. We've talked about that, so I won't dwell too much on that amount of time already. I created this one as well, you know, again, as another template. And the reason why you have to have this, they're very simple templates, but it's a frame for you to decide what you are going to do. Because when you sit down, that's when you can now say that, okay, at the beginning of the year, I really need to talk about my business plan. In my small team, I had to do it with my team. We talked about our marketing plan. We talked about our business plan. And we're achieving it now because everybody knows. I don't understand. How do you deliver on your business targets without having an internal communication strategy? You just assume that everybody will know what to do. Somehow, miraculously, Shola will work with Doye. Doye will work with Kayode. Kayode will work with Anibe. Miraculously, you do have bringing them together to align their thinking on a common purpose. These things ought not to be. So yeah, people need to know what they're supposed to know, what the, how you want them to feel. That's for you, the leader, to create that environment. And number, the do is the most important thing. All of your employees must never be left in doubt about what the action you require from them at every point in time, which is why I put it in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, because there are different actions per quarter. There are different imperatives per quarter. Even me, my team will tell you, I had to tell one day, I told myself, look, oh, this is the number of clients we have. This is what we need to do in this quarter for us to be able to do the next thing in the next quarter. It's important that they know that information cannot stay in my head because I need them to be able to support the strategic direction. And that's for my team of five. Well, not even less than that, but well extended team. So um, communication span, this is another template. I also got this online. I won't bore you with that. But I will stop by saying that being purposeful and intentional is what effective employee communications in 2021 is about. We need to ensure that employees have all the clarity, the content, and the assurance they need to enable the organization to succeed in the ongoing economic crisis. You cannot leave it to chance. And I will just end this by saying, these are my contact details. Um, if you would like to reach out to me, I would also drop my phone number in the chat. I won't put it on the screen here, but if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, questions that you have after the call, you are most welcome to just introduce yourself. Where well, I'm a WhatsApp person, please, so don't call me. Don't send me WhatsApp. I'll say, you know, uh, I joined the webinar. I have a question, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I think I'll leave it at this point. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I haven't bored you. Um, over to you, Kayode. Wow, thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much for, for that um, session. I personally, I learned a lot because I also have a brand of my own that I'm trying to, you know, learn one or two things from. And I definitely picked out some things from that, Ma. So, Ma, like, um, we have so many um, people from different sectors that joined us for today's um, webinar. So, like, um, we have HR, we have um, internal communications manager. We have project managers um, and we have um, other 
people from other sectors. So I'm yeah. sure we are, um, there are questions that everyone has, you know, that they are willing to ask you. But I will start from my own question, you know. So, uh, and my own question is, I think I've gotten to a point whereby I know that um, internal communications should be done irrespective of how big or how small the organization is. So, um, but um, the question I have now is that how can you, like, um, how can you assess like an effective employee communication in an organization? Is there like a yardstick to say, okay, this is um, where we should be at, um, you know, when we are communicating? And sorry, everyone that is um, like, if you have a question, just drop it in the question and answer session. I'm definitely going to um, read all the questions out after she answers this. Thank you. Yeah, so thanks, Kayode. So I, I think the, the, the acid test is if you are, are you achieving your results? Is the acid test. I, you know, my, my, it's, it's amazing, honestly. And whenever I say this, because I talk to CEOs, you know, they don't, be, they don't believe. Most of the time, I don't want to, I can't say 99.9, .9, but if most of the time, most of the companies that are not achieving their target, except when there is a real problem, as in your product is bad, your, you know, your business is, you know, you understand there's something very wrong. Most of the time, the challenge is from within and is a disconnect within the organization. At least that has been my observation in the Nigerian setting. There's a massive disconnect. There will be Problems happening outside. Yes, the environment is outside of everybody's control. So it, I'm not saying that, you know, the, the challenges, the external environment will be there. But the companies that will, it will affect more are those companies that are disconnected internally. They are having all sorts of political squabbles. They are built empires. You know, people are not working together. There's information flow is going in different directions. There's nobody forcing that internal collaboration through communications. Through, and and it, it's, a, it's a leadership, um, I would say, um, failure or flaw or shortcoming in my own um, estimation. And I think you know, a lot of leaders do not, may not realize it. So any organization that is delivering as promised, in other words, the culture is the way they want it to be, or deliver their, their customers, they are delivering the service to their customers the way the customers want it, and they are, they are um, how would I say the the all their, their investors are happy with them? They are they are fulfilling their commitment. They are meeting all of their targets. Clearly, that I don't need to assess anything for that. So it's your business results that will make me know how well you are doing with your communications and then your employee satisfaction. So because some people they deliver the business results and they make sure they really finish their employees, they train them to do it. So if you are doing well financially but your employees are dissatisfied, they're always talking badly about you, and eh, then I, I also know that you have an issue. So it's about employee satisfaction and business results. Those are the two things that we know. When you, anywhere, any company that you see where people, their staff talk very well about them, they are, in fact, I would say the employee satisfaction is the, is the biggest milestone because it's not about money. There are places where people are paid a lot of money, the employees still speak very poorly about them, and it's because of this disengagement, you know, there are blocks, there are silos, people do not feel valued, you know, and all of that. So I would say employees satisfaction is the highest thing, but I would also say if you are delivering on your business objectives, particularly at a time like this, then it's very likely that you have a system of communications that is working in the organization. But if you are not hitting your targets, please don't blame it on COVID. It's not COVID. There is more going on than COVID because everybody is experiencing COVID. That's fine. Thank you very much, Ma. So I, I, I got that. I got that, Ma. So um, we have like um, some questions and we have a contribution as well. I think we have a contribution from Mr. Babatunde Aribido. He says that uh, his view is that when there's toxicity in a work environment, the fault sits largely on the laps of the C-suits. They either started it or they encouraged it in some ways. How do you think this can be addressed? Okay, this is also a question, man. He's saying, how do you think it can be addressed? Like uh, when there's toxicity, maybe like um, there are conflicts in internally, mm. you know, which is not leading to um, effective communication. How do you think that can be resolved? So is he saying, uh, I, I didn't get that. Okay, so it's, okay, on the C-suite, yeah. How do you think, it, it's a, it's a, so thanks Tunde for that. It's a, it's, it's really a, I, I mean, it's, it's really a, 
Yes, is the leaders, I would say, the leaders have to address it. But what I would say is if you're an HR manager in such an organization, have the courage to say it, to find a way, to let them see how their behaviors are impacting on the business outcomes. Because I would assume that if you're a C-suit leader, you don't want the business to go bust. I will assume, you understand, you, you are not there to run it down. So you find a way to make them see that they are, you know, how the behaviors, you may not point it out, but just, you, you have to help them to realize that this is the sort of environment that is happening in the organization. This work needs to change. We need to work on these areas. You may not be able to eradicate that toxicity alone, but showing them how it is impacting on the organization is helpful. You know, I, I, I mean, it's helpful. I, I once got called in, you know, sometimes to, even in my former place of work where we've had to do informal surveys, focus groups with employees, and we, we preserve the anonymity, but we show it back to the leaders. And, you know, so it, it does help to create a, a reaction, but you are right that it's a tough one. But what I would always say is if you're an HR manager in that space and you're, or you're a communications manager or you are a manager or a leader or a supervisor, find a way to let them see how it is affecting the business. If it is not affecting the business, you're not, it will be tough to get their attention. I know that one is for real. But if it is affecting their business, it's making staff leave. In fact, if they are losing staff, uh -huh, that's when you package that story well and tell them that this is what you think or why we're losing staff. And you know, you think that it's and that I think we need to try a bit more. People are saying this, people are saying that. I think that's the best you can really do. Okay, man. Thank you very much for that, man. So uh, we have uh, one question from Doye. She says that uh, can culture, gender, nationality, or social class have an effect on the international internal communication within an organization? Well, it's a good question, Doye. I, 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 I think the effect that it should have is in terms of we should be aware of the culture. So if you are somebody that you have an, um, you have an employee pool that is diverse and there are different cultures, you need to be aware of that. So that when you, when you are talking to them or when you are, how, however it is you're engaging them, you are sensitive, you know, for instance, you know, like if for instance, you know, it's Ramadan period, you have a lot of people from, you know, fasting and that sort of thing. You just need to be sensitive. The timing for meetings, you know, things that you demand and all of that. So you, you it, it helps in that, it, you need to be sensitive, otherwise you will run into problems, particularly when you have multicultural people, people from different cultures, you need to manage it well so that you do not create an environment that makes some people feel that, you know, they now start breaking into cliques and all of that. And, and, and a good organization, if you are very big, you need to try to promote your own culture. So there will be a culture in terms of how we, this is how we behave, you know, as, as opposed to, so people will still have their own ethnic culture, their you know, behavioral culture. But in this environment, people will understand that this is, you know, you promote a certain kind of culture. For instance, culture of punctuality, culture of courtesy, culture of integrity, culture of respect. You know, these are all the things you, you can only build through communications, which is why you, you, you cannot run your organization just by letting people oh, come in, do this, do that. And you, you have to acculturize them, just like we used to do in school in those days. The reason why when you enter school, they tell you to wear uniform, they tell you to say the school pledge, they tell you to sing the school song, you know, all those things, is they're acculturizing you, <laughs> which is why many of us, by the time we leave, we still have that culture in us, like, like me in Ife now, I went to the University of Ife, we have a culture of activism. It's, it's, and it's, I don't know that it's from the students, from the lecturer, Aluta is in our blood, that's the culture. We hate injustice, Do you understand what I'm saying? And you enter Ife, you must live as an you Oh, wow, you have to come out as an activist in your own way. Even in the office, you're the kind of person that we speak of. So that's what I mean. You have, we have to be more intentional rather than, I see a lot of organizations just allowing anything goes. And culture affects behavior, it affects delivery, it affects performance. So you cannot leave it to chance. And it's only communications that will help you to build that culture just like it was in schools. In schools, school assembly on Monday is part of their culture, it's part of the culture program. Why do they gather all of us together on Monday? It's part of it now. Why do they have assembly? It's, it's part of the culture program. 
Every organization needs it. And then we see price giving day, all those things, they are all part of the culture and communications program. So as to drive, <coughs> excuse me, to drive a culture of excellence and let people encourage other people to do better. So yeah, thanks for that, Kaide. Any other question? <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, I can see someone. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, we have a question. Uh, we have a question from Salt. So it says that um, can you share your go-to tips on using internal communications to keep employees switched on and engaged in these trying times? Hmm. Is that salt? He says from salt. Yes. <laughs> As a jab question, <laughs> salt. Anyway, so um, switched and engaged in these trying times. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a tough one, but it's not that tough. I think I always start from this premise of treat people like people. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just treat them like people. So if you want to treat people like people, you start off by what is concerning them. Break your employees into groups. The people who have just come in, what are their issues? The people who are field workers, just test and ask, how are they doing? Look at how they are engaging, how they are responding. If you already have a system in place for talking to them. Like I said, if you see that people are, it's like, it's like for instance, as I've done this webinar now, and I do it from beginning to end, nobody asks any question, nobody asks me any question. That's feedback. It's not because they did not have questions to ask. It means I did not create an environment that makes people want to ask anything. So that in itself is feedback, which I then have to use and say, okay, how do I then structure the next webinar to make sure I create an environment that makes people want to speak? So it, it, it's about, I would say, look at the feedback that you are getting. So if you say people are switched off, what is it that is making them switched off? Let's start from that. If you say you want them to be engaged, what does engaged mean to you? Please explain what that engaged means. Then based on that, look at the difference between where they are now, where you want them to be. What do you need to do on a heart level, on a mind level? In other words, what do I need to do to address the way they are feeling? What do I need to do to address the way they are thinking to bring them from where they are now to where they are? It's a very good question, Salt, and Salt is a guru. So I, I, <laughs> that question is coming. So I will say start off from, if you are noticing the switching off, that means that there was a time they used to be switched on. There were things they used to do that made you know they were switched on. Okay, now that they are switched off, why are they not, what, what is the behavior they're exhibiting? And what's, can you probe deeply to find out what's happening in that space? And what can you then begin to do, to do it? So I would just say, watch the behaviors. Watch the behaviors. People, you can learn a lot by observing people. People like me, that's all I do for a living. I observe, I owe a lot, I observe people. I observe, and I learn a lot just by observing. Most of the time, people will provide you the answers on how to reach them, what their language of, um, communication or an engagement. I don't want to say love language, but what it is, they will show you by the things they say or the things they do not do, the things they respond to, the things they do not respond to. Take all of that insight and look for how you can, you know, come up with something that we have, will move the needle. So Salt, I hope that answers your question. It's a bit theoretical, you know, but I hope that answers the question a little bit. Uh, yes, ma, yes, ma. It says, it says that the answer is indeed with the people. So uh, we have uh, more questions coming in. Uh, so uh, Mrs. Funlola Du says that, as you have described, the issues in many organizations is not enough communication, inadequate or ineffective internal communications. On the other hand, can there be also, can there be also cases of too much internal communication? If so, what are the drawbacks of this? Mm -hmm. You have a good point there. There may be some, there may be over, um, communication overload. But I will always say, if it's not harming the business, it's better to be too much than less. But if it is harming the business, which is where I come again to, you know, if, it, if it's created a situation whereby people are not listening anymore to what is being said, then that's an issue. If it's creating a problem whereby you are just talking, 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 and then only nobody's, yeah, yeah, hey, we really need to dial back. But if it's not, you know, people are still reading it, they're still engaging with it. It's not affecting business results. It's not diluting the, the important messaging because the risk, you know, of a com um, communication overload is 
you miss the important point. So if that is not, if that is happening, then you need to dial back and then streamline the communication in such a way that it is the most important thing that is coming out. But again, like I showed on the other slide that I showed, communication is a, internal communications works best when it's a two-way thing. So I, I would rather we have a system that allows that two-way to happen than something that makes it, you streamline it to the extent that it's only what is coming from down and up, is coming down that is going through. Nothing is coming from um, down um, from down up. So sometimes it is that bottoms up communication that tends to now look like overload because what is now happening is you have opened up the floodgates and then the people at the shop floor level are now wanting to speak. They're generating information, they're sharing what they're doing. So it's now looking like it's getting a lot. If you put a lid on that, ah, it's not a good place to be. So there's a delicate balance, but I would say at the end of the day, it's hearts and minds. That's this picture you have here. So do not sacrifice the heart for the sake of the mind. It, 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 it doesn't, but that is where disconnect happens. People will show up at work, their heart is not in their work. And I mean, it's just not the same. For someone like me, the heart of things is very, very important. The minute I lose my heart for something, I, I, my mind can't function with you anymore. I know there's some people, not everybody's like me, but for somebody like me, that's it. So the minute my heart leaves, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't continue, I can't function. I can't, you know? So I don't know if that helps you, Fulola, but is, I think it's finding that delicate balance. And um, yeah. And then also thinking that there are many people in, in the organization. So I also am careful sometimes like when you're in a meeting and people give feedback and say, oh, these meetings are getting too many. I want to first make sure, is it everybody that feels that way? Because there's some people that actually like the meeting because they are new and the meeting is helping them. So I mean, say, okay, I will make this meeting compulsory for everybody, but for the people who feel they need to be here, let's still hold the meeting rather than stopping the meetings entirely because we're all in different places in our work journey. So next question, please. That's right, yes, uh, she, she, yes she, she dropped a message in the chat section. She said uh, it does, it does. So like, um, I think we'll just take- uh, there's, a, two, there's a question. One or two questions. Yes, uh, there's a pass, there's a question in the Q&A session yes. uh, from an anonymous attendee. Mm -hmm. So uh, he or she says, I have just resumed an office too, mm. but not been, onboarded. Mm. I admitted I didn't know about their products, but was told by a fellow colleague you that it's out of floor. place to <laughs> say. <laughs> I have asked several times on knowledge, knowledge sharing, sharing. Wow. but got nothing. I was told to flow with the fast-paced environment. Yeah, environment. What would you yeah, advise, Ma? Thank you for sharing this. So this is a typical case of what I have observed in a lot of companies. It's wrong. It's not supposed to be. This is, I mean, you are leaving this, someone has come in, in you're not even, as in you can't even onboard a new staff. Why? Okay, so what I will say is, clearly you cannot change the culture because this is where you have found yourself, but just know that that's, this is where you are at as of now. What I will say is that if they have any presence on the internet, if they have any presence on social media, please go on it yourself. Look for publications that are around, you know, um, if people and are you working from home? If you are working from home, I know it will be a bit tougher. But if you are, if you, if there's a face-to-face -face work element, what it means is that you have to start going from table to table, and asking people, you know, setting up meetings with them and saying, even virtually you can do it. Look for people that you can set up 30 minutes connect with and say, please, I just want to get a sense of what's going on. I, I usually used to do that, and I found it very helpful when I start a new job. So onboard yourself is what I'm saying. You know, on, onboard yourself. And you don't feel bad that because even me, the big company I started off with, this onboarding one is actually a, a problem in many organizations. And um, most people don't do it well. They leave it to the leaders. It's, there are some leaders who onboard people very, very well. There's some leaders that don't onboard. They just expect that as you, are, as you come in, you just go with the flow, which is the type of leader I showed you in that slide that doesn't communicate well. So you see that, you see what I was saying when I said that that slide in my view, is very representative of what happens even in Nigeria. So that, that person that told you um, they should go with the flow is one of those type of leaders that doesn't know, like to communicate to their staff. And they want to pretend as if it's a competitive advantage. It's rubbish. It's poor leadership. Highly poor leadership. I have 
just I, I'm not even mind words and tell you maybe the person was busy. You are not you are never too busy to communicate. If you are the, pre the president of New Zealand, makes time to communicate. If Donald Trump could make time for Twitter and social media, please tell me how your work is more important than Donald Trump tweeting. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, I'm more wrong spend on social media. So I don't want to hear that. You are you the person, I'm sorry, the person is I effectively that you have no clue how to lead people, but it is what it is. You can't change that. So onboard yourself. And if you want to reach out to me, then kind of please drop my number in the chat. If you want to reach out to me one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just send me. But you told that you say yourself you are anonymous. How will I know who you are? I don't know that you're anonymous from um, <laughs> anonymous from social media. We run out of time, but you guys have stayed on. You'll be wonderful. Um, I, do we have any pressing questions, Kyle? Do we? I think we have to bring this to a close. We're two minutes over time. Any uh, maybe maybe we should just take uh, one more question, then we just uh, we call it a okay. wrap. So uh, um, someone says that um, what role does social media have in ensuring effective internal communications in the workplace? Well, I, I don't think social media plays a role per se because you're not supposed to be using social media to talk to your staff. You're supposed to have your own internal platforms, you know, and I didn't want to go into the platform conversation because there are so many softwares and I, I, I don't believe in using a technical solution to solve internal problems, except it is you've done your research and you see that that is what is useful and that's what works for your organization. Otherwise, using the platforms that you have, you know, it, it's more about the strategy and the intent and the organization around it rather than the technicality of it. But um, so I wouldn't say social media, social media is relevant in that if there is a issue going on in social media, like there's a security, like now there's crime, you need to do internal communication and tell people that advise them, please, oh, we have heard that there is so and so going on in Lagos, particularly in this our axis. When you leave office, please, if you're leaving after six, don't um, stay outside, you know, this and that, all those sorts of things. These are things that show that you care. You know, you, you also need to think about Tell your supervisors, oh, please make sure your meetings end on time because, you know, the outside is this and that, traffic reports, all those sort of things. So it's relevant for the purposes of helping your, your, your staff because at the end of the day, you don't want your staff to be attacked. You know, it's, it, if people don't come to work the next day because they attacked them the night before, the work still will not go on, you know. Although, like I said, I know a lot of us are working from home, there are people who are also working. So I think social media is more in terms of for listening, um, I think for some people, maybe linked, I, I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't advise, I don't think social media is the place to use internal communications, but I would rather say it's a place where it helps you to understand how you can, you know, the things that are information that is going on outside that is relevant for you to talk to your employees about. I hope that's helpful. Any other question, Kaede, before we... Okay, yes. Yeah, you say you reach out. Thank you. Yeah, we are just getting um, reactions from the um, from the participants. Um, Salt says, I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Thank you, <laughs> Tim Essie. Um, a BA Magbra says, um, thank you, Shola. I appreciate this great thank session, you. Tim Arts. So uh, we got a lot of uh, feedback from 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 the participants. So um, just to just to say as well, I think um, we have so um, an upcoming webinar, um, which is uh, I think uh, Miss uh, I don't know if Miss Abulu wants to say a little about it. So mm -hmm. we have an upcoming webinar. So maybe she can. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it has been useful for you somehow. So Abidemi, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, yes, thank you so much for joining. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for sharing your Tuesday afternoon with us. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch after this. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Kaide, I think we can bring this to a close. Um, you're, all, you're all allowed to please sign off. <laughs> 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 thank you.